you know you're in a comic book show when some police officer says, leave the police work to us. Last thing we need is heroes. And the first thing you think in the audience is, Psh, bitch, please. We got superheroes for that. Welcome to the heart of the stories we tell. My name is Rob, and tonight I will be reviewing... Episode 5 of Cloak and Dagger, The Princeton Offensive. Alright, so we've got a couple of things to go over here. Mostly the fact that Cloak and Dagger themselves are becoming more and more intertwined and are working better together. And I really like it. I especially liked the episode, beginning of the episode with the way they got them pretty quickly back in line when last week was eh, a little hard to go with. Overall, the show is still doing an amazing job at being primarily about the trauma that they're going through, but still, at the same time, being about superheroes. But alright, for those of you that don't know what I do here, I review stories as they come up, come up with theory videos, and do throwback Thursdays occasionally for older stories. If it sounds interesting and you'd like to hear me rattle on about storytelling, click that subscribe button. I do want to say that a friend of mine is taking a writing class, and one of the things he told me to do is he was told to break down writing into a sentence. Break down what your story is about. And the more I think about it, the less I think that this story is about superheroes. It's just dressed as superheroes. And that's kind of cool. But now I have a comment to deal with from last week. And yes, Tandy did showcase a little bit more control. But only a little bit, really. This week is when we really see how she's able to call the daggers at will. But having said that, I will admit that I thought that it was a real suicide attempt until t this week's episode where we learn exactly what she was doing. Either way, the light and dark force is still coming about, and we still have at least one character that has no control, and the other that's at best got partial. Let's throw this up there and get started. So once again, it's stop. Spoiler time. Okay, so they've been doing this dualistic storytelling thing, and I've talked about it a bunch. But I want to really talk about one moment that was so great tonight. It was partway through the episode, maybe about 20 minutes in. Cloak is going to be at a basketball game, and it's a very important one. And Dagger's going to prostitute herself in order to try to get information about Roxanne. And the announcer's announcing the fact that we have two teams that are going to leave it all on the field, trying to make a difference, trying to get what they deserve. And at the end of the day, it all comes down to tonight. And it's just so brilliantly done. Because, yeah, that's exactly what's going on on both cases. You know, I will say that the sexual content in this is much higher than it is in most of the MCU stuff. So I am very surprised that the one dealing with teenagers... Well, maybe I shouldn't. I guess, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm the odd man out for having not been super sexually active as a teenager. So whatever, okay. Forget that. Maybe that's just the way it becomes relatable to people in this day and age. I'm old. Either way. Yeah. Tandy figures out that people at Roxxon are using services of dating services in order to get things going. And the fact is, is that she can see what people hope for. So it's kind of like a form of telepathy that allows her to steal steal their inner thoughts, their inner qualities. Now, to be honest, she really needs Tyrone to learn what they fear because that's how you really get leverage. You have both, but right now she's doing it her way. And that's fine, too. Meanwhile, he's having problems of his own of a sexual nature, although much more my speed of sexual nature. He doesn't know how to interact with women because, well, psh, confusing. I especially love the fact that when he tried to give her the coat, she's all like, oh, I, I, I don't want you to feel like you have to give me something. And even I know this one is a really bad boyfriend. I sit there and I go, oh, that's a trap. But that's a trap. No, you totally need to give her that jacket. But we also dig into a bit with what's going on with him. His brother wanted to use basketball to get out of the neighborhood. The fact that the mom's job has taken them out doesn't matter. Because now Tyron wants to, he wants to make his brother proud. He wants to live the life that, you know, all of a sudden I'm having flashbacks to Game of Thrones and Ned living Brandon's life. 
Huh. I wonder about that. About part of that being the whole survivor's guilt thing. And whether or not part of this is... I'm trying to live the life that you were destined to have. Because you can't have it. Because I feel guilty that I do. Huh. Alright. Put a pin in that. But anyway... He goes and he finds one of his older brother's old friends. When he does, he figures out that he's actually made something of his life. Success. And you know what? That's cool, too. Because at the end of the day, that's what people need in this world. They need to find out that there are ways. Even if they're small, there are victories. And maybe right about now, that's what he needs, is a victory. Meanwhile, since he's the one channeling the force we've already seen, the Dark Force... There is part of me that wonders, even though Tandy's the one going after Roxxon, if he's not the one that really needs to get in there, how much notes they have on the Dark Force, and if they even have notes on what the Light Force is. In the meantime, like I said up top, she can now form those daggers pretty much at will, which is cool, because that's like the best offensive weapon she has. Although at the same time, she's mastering her touch ability, and that is kind of freaky. Although I do have to laugh. How easy is it for a cute blonde chick to walk around and touch people? And, well, of course no guy complains that the cute blonde chick touched them. They're just like, oh, cool. Hi, how are you? I guess that would kind of bring us back to the conversation about privilege from last week. Although I'm going to change this up and ask this mid-stride. If a stranger who was of the correct sexuality to entice you, just randomly touched you, what would you think, especially if you were attracted to them? Would you think anything of it? Or would you just be like, yeah, that's cool. But then we're back to the guy who can't control his powers, the one who just realized that the ref is on his side because he made a bet because he's going to lose everything if he loses this bet. Oh, yeah. And then he accidentally teleports to Tandy. Well, after he passes her the ball through time and space. And then I don't know if you're supposed to thank someone that throws you over a balcony into water because they got you home, or if you're supposed to say, hey, you just tried to kill me. I'm still not 100% sold on how the power set works, or why it is that Tyrone's powers went nuts because Tandy was using hers. Although there obviously is a connection, we're still going to have to wait on a little bit more. But I have to say I loved his analogy. His analogy was so on point, I actually giggled a little. You took out too many library books. Now, I'm stuck paying for the over fee. And then even better when he's all like, oh, well, um, can't you just touch someone and send me back? No, I don't think your teleport power works that way. But I do think the fact that everyone you touched that night was shadow touched is the same reason because she was trying to use the light touch. It's kind of messed up, though. By seeing their fears, he got a more... Uh, what's the word? Empathy towards them than her seeing their hopes. And as such, he kind of threw the game at that last second. Kind of messed up. But okay. The more important part here is that we now know who's in charge of Roxxon. We know who the bad guy is. We know who has the answers. But we also now have more messed up inner turmoil. Tyrone's going to have to deal with the fact that he missed the game-winning shot, and even notwithstanding doing it on purpose, even notwithstanding the superpowers, that alone could mess you up in high school. And then we have the really messed up ending. From a police officer doing shots of cocaine just to find a corrupt cop, which, I mean, that's just crazy levels of meta-narrative. To to the girlfriend showing up in the room with just her bra on underneath the jacket. Can I just say that's sexy, even if she's way underage? But then, he didn't even pull the covers over his head. For a second, I was like, no, don't don't pull the covers over your head, you're gonna poof. But he poofed anyway, and he poofed to exactly what he needed to see. His buddy, the one who made it, in league with the bad guy cop. And then even worse... All of that mixed with what Tandy saw. So what are you thinking of this? How crazy do you think this is going to get? And how dark 
do you think that Freeform will let this get? So far, it's much darker than Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but more engrossing, too. Let me know down in the comments, and then, of course, like and share this video. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button and join our little community. Because what I like to do here is I like to talk about these things, figure out where they're going. And this one, this one is one of those dark, dark things that it almost feels like it was made for HBO, not for Freeform, ABC Family. I hope you have a good night, though, and thank you for walking with me through the heart of Cloak and Dagger, episode 5.